Hi, my name is Chris, and welcome to the first post of Protoblog. Uh, it's going to be a blog about electronics and modifying and making things. Uh, the first video today is going to be about my DIY oscilloscope. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what's in it, how it works, and yeah, that's actually about it. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so this is the DIY oscilloscope, or as I call it, the altoscope. Now let's open it up and take a look at what's inside. Alright, so that's the guts of it. As you can see there, there's a graphic LCD. Some of you may know that as the Nokia 5110 black and white display sold by Adafruit, and that's because it is. Um, it's a very cheap, very small display that I decided to use. Um, there's a bunch of buttons here, three buttons on the top, two on the side, power switch, and a three and a half inch, no, three and a half millimeter headphone jack, which I used for uh, a probe connector, which is this. And uh, I'll admit it's not really a probe, it's more or less some chopped up headphones and some alligator clips. Um, over here to the side we have a one meg trim pot, and uh, this is used to set the trigger voltage level. This is a 9 volt battery used to power it, obviously. Um, underneath the LCD is an Arduino, uh, I believe it's a Pro Mini, like this one. Other components that are in it involve things like one of these, it's a LM339 comparator. And uh, a lot of resistors and a lot of random connections. Uh, I'll explain more about those later. For now, let's turn this thing on and give it a shot. All right. So as you can see on our Altoscope, uh, that's what I'm calling it. Uh, we have a signal on display, and I forgot to mention earlier, but um, I did mention there's a trim pot in here, and as you can see, it's right there, really tiny. And this is used to adjust the trigger on the scope. Uh, and, uh, whoops, oops. To adjust the trigger, you have to use really one of these. It's a little uh, flathead screwdriver there. And, uh, yeah, I didn't really know how to f fit in a knob on uh, this tiny little trim pot and uh, still have enough space to close the case. So uh, this was the next best solution, include a little screwdriver. I'm just going to put it back into where it was, because right now we have the trigger level set to a um, good place, and uh, I'll show you that right now. Bam. And you can see it turn on, uh, trigger level is activating at about uh, 1.6 volts. And it's uh, when you turn on the trigger, you can actually get the frequency counter up here. And uh, it's not the most accurate counter in the world. It You generally got to give it about... Uh, 10% leeway at, uh, with higher signals. I'm not 100% sure why that is. I'm pretty sure it's because I, I coded something slightly wrong. Maybe not. But uh, it, And it also like, likes to work really nice with uh, square waves only. Or if you uh, if you have triangle or sine waves or other waves, you got you to gotta make sure to keep the trigger more or less in the middle of the wave. Uh, not really sure why that is because the way I, function, I programmed the uh, frequency counter was to... Uh, uh, take input from a comparator which uh, will uh, output a square wave at the uh, at the trigger level you see here and that should give you a uh, high pulse duration and then I also realized that not all signals have 50 percent you know um, pulse width so uh, I also made it add the uh, low signal times and then you add that together divide by two you get roughly the uh, frequency um, I did read, however, that uh, it might be that the uh, sampling frequency, or this, that the way that Arduino does it, it isn't accurate and you need to take more than one sample, but uh, if you set many, many samples, the Arduino will pretty well uh, take a long-ass time with every sample and it'll probably 
not be very useful if the signal is only updating every like uh, three seconds. Yeah, so I decided to not do that. And it's only taking one sample, therefore the measurement it's taking is probably not the most accurate in the world. But it works. Anyways, uh, let's get to cycling through what's in this. Uh, this is what you press here, uh, where my thumb is this button, and it cycles through uh, cycles through a bunch of things that it, that shows you uh, things like uh, the voltage level of the signal, whether or not you have the, your uh, frequency counter slash trigger on, and if we press the button, press again, sometimes it needs one or two presses. Next screen shows you the uh, time division, it's in mo microseconds, and over here it shows you in millivolts. One more time and it shows you the where the trigger level is and uh, it jumps around a lot and that's probably because I have the uh, ADC set to read very very damn fast uh, I'll explain why in a little bit but uh, yeah so that's not 100% reliable I'm gonna have to get around to fix that at some point and but it does tell you that right now the trigger is off and it's just reading the level right now so bam, we're gonna switch, and this is gonna tell you the LCD contrast level it goes from zero to 70. Uh, there's a very good reason why I included this here, and it's very important. I'll explain that a little bit later. And we're just gonna go back to the main screen. And there's one other function that uh, you don't get to see by just clicking that button and scrolling through. And that's it, and you, what you gotta do is press this button here, and that button there. And that'll en enable you to use the single shot mode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug this, I'm gonna turn on single shot mode, boom. And see right there, it says SS waiting. And I'm gonna plug in the signal, and boom, oh. Yeah, that captured a little bit of a messy signal, and that is because the function generator has slightly gotten mildly noisy, and that's because uh, I haven't connected it up very well, and there are probes and connectors going everywhere, so that's not great. But it did capture the signal over here, as you can see. So it does work. And I'm actually quite proud of that. Anyways, I'm gonna exit out of that mode. So you do that by holding the button again. Uh, sometimes it flitzes back into the uh, into the single shot mode again, whether you like it or not. You gotta make, kinda just gotta be patient with it. Anyways, uh, so yeah, that's the uh, general breakdown of this thing in action. Uh, In a second, I'm going to show you how the signal looks like on this compared to how it looks like on the HP oscilloscope. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to lie, my uh, camera is telling me that it is slightly hot and it wants to take a break. So we're going to do that right now. All right, so I lied to you a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to show you what the signal looks like on the oscilloscope compared to what it looks like on an actual oscilloscope. And this is because I realized that I've been droning on for quite a bit. So we're going to cut the video short. Uh, just about here and uh, next time I'm, I will show you what it looks like and uh, hopefully we'll go into more detail as to uh, how this oscilloscope was made and uh, it'll give you an idea of how you can start your own DIY oscilloscope project or maybe even uh, just build one based off my design anyways uh, thanks for watching uh, bye